Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you're interested in watching any of any one of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number one through 250. Right now we are in the middle of redoing the problems and we are on page number 169. Please turn to it. Page number 169, the very first problem on the page, number 121. Number 121. Question is 121. The question is what fraction what fraction is covered? What fraction is covered by the trim? And the trim we are told trim we are told is one foot wide all the way around and we are told that the door that we have is 6 by 8 it looks something like this here is our 6 by 8 door this is 6 from here to here and it is 8 foot long door and then we have a trim around it there are a couple of sections something like that and the question is, what fraction, what fraction of the trim, what fraction is covered by the trim? What fraction of the door is covered by trim? Now listen, there are two ways we can go about it. I'm going to show you both methods. One method is to actually do it a little bit indirectly. Instead of trying to figure out the area of the trim, listen very carefully. Instead of trying to figure out the area of the trim, it's much easier actually to figure out the area of these two sections. This section and that section right here. Okay, so keep listening. We know that this is one foot wide. This is the trim. We are told that the trim trim is one foot wide all the way around. So that's one foot, this is one foot, and this is one foot. Okay, stay within the story. It's very important that you stay in the story. So if this is one foot, if this is one foot, and this is one foot, and this is one foot, that means from here to here, let's give them names so we can we don't have to talk about A to here. A to B plus C to D. A to B plus C to D must be 5 foot. Are you with me? Well, then this is 1 foot and this is 1 foot. Which means that D to E, D to E, D to E, if this, this entire thing is 6 foot, this is 1 foot and this is 1 foot, D to E must be 4 feet. I'm explaining too much, I don't need to. This, so the area of these two combined, not just one of them, area of these two combined, this length plus that length is 5 feet, this is 4 feet, so it's 20 feet, that's it. And, and the door we are told is, so here's the, here's the shaded area, shaded area over the door, we know it is, it is, a, it is, it is 4 by 5 shaded area, and the door is 6 by 8, 6 by 8, so that cross out with 2, and it is 5 by 12, 5 by 12, this is the shaded area shaded area over the door. I told myself I'm going to make it quick, but I'm, I don't know why I always do that. It's too simple. We're done. This is the shaded area, but we're not interested in what portion of the door is the shaded area. The question is asking what, what, fraction, of the, what, fraction, is what fraction is covered by the trim. The trim is all the outside that I'm not shaded. We're doing it in reverse order. So the trim, the trim over the door has to be whatever is left over. This is 512, so it has to be 712, obviously. That's all. If, if this portion is 512 of the total, then the rest of the stuff, which is the trim, has to be 712. That's one way of doing it. If you like, I can show you one more method, which is, which is, which is a little bit uh, a roundabout method. I don't quite like that method, but this is the most straightforward method. The second method, second method is, let's do it right here. I'm going to have to redraw the whole thing. In the second method, I have to redraw the whole thing. This time I promise you I'm going to make it quick. I'm 
I'm not going to explain too much. It is it is too simple. It's too simple. From here to here is one foot. This we are told is six feet. So this rectangle that you see here, one, this rectangle that you see here is one by six. And how many of these do we have? We have four of those. Oh sorry, we have three of them. Here's the second one, here's the second one, and here's the third one. We have three of them times three. Now we have to take care of the remaining portion which is which is this part right here. There are four of these. There are four of these rectangles and each one of them is one foot wide. It is each one of them is one foot wide and from here to here how many do you suppose it is? From there to there. Again, this is this is one, this is one, this is one. So that's three. The entire thing was eight, which means this plus this is five, which means this is two and a half. Two and a half times one. Two and a half times one. Two and a half times one times four. There are four of them. You see right here? One, two, three, and four. There are four of those. That's it. We are done. Four times two and a half is ten. And six times three is eighteen. So all together we get this is this is 18, 18 square feet and the total area we are told is 6 by 8. 6 by 8. 6 by 8. No, sorry. That's right, the total is 6 by 8. Did I make a mistake? That's not it's not 18, is it? This is 18 plus 10 is 28. I'm not paying attention. It is 28, not 18. 6 times 3 is 18 plus 10 is 28. 28 over this. And uh, if, we, if, we, if we divide top and bottom by 4, this becomes 7 and this becomes 2. And we end up with 7 over 6 times 2, which is 12. It is 7 12, just like before. The trim is 7 12. Oh, the trim is 7 12 at the door. I know it is counterintuitive. It is counterintuitive because you might, you, you, when you look at the pictures, it's difficult to believe by looking at it by, with our eyes that the so called trim would actually be more than half of the area of the door, but it is. It is seven-fifth. Do you understand? Let's do the next one, shall we? Number 122, otherwise we'll be here forever. Number 122. Number 122. In 122, we are told that A is equal to negative 3 over 10. And the question is, negative 3 over 10 and the question is if you were to arrange them a a squared and a cubed what will be the proper order of these three quantities given the fact that a we are told is negative 0.3 or negative 3 over 10 so the first thing to actually do is to figure out the three three quantities so if a is 3 over 10 then a squared would be negative 3 squared over 10 squared which is positive 9 over 100 leave it like that leave it alone a cubed would be that amount right here, 9 over 100, times negative 3 over 10, which is going to give us negative 27 over 1000. Are you with me? Okay, fine. I'm going to raise all of this thing because we need the room. I'm going to raise all of this thing. And now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the other two quantities. We're going to take the first two quantities. The first quantity has a denominator of 10, the second quantity has a denominator of 100, the third quantity has a denominator of 1000. These are all three different quantities. Let's make all of them the same. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom of the first quantity by 100 over 100. We're going to multiply the second one by 10 over 10. And when we do that, what we find is that, what we find is that this quantity right here comes out to be negative 300 over 1000. This quantity comes out to be positive 90 over 1000. And this quantity is just negative 27 over a thousand. Are you with me so far? Now, now that all of them have the same denominator, now that all of them have the same denominator, it plays no role anymore. It plays no role. All you have to do is now take the number line, take the number line and arrange the numbers. First I have negative 300. First one is negative 300 right here, negative 300. So here's my negative 300 right here. And that was A. So let's put A underneath it. Then we have positive 90. Positive 90 is going to be somewhere here, and that's our a squared. And then finally we have negative 27. If this is negative 300, negative 27 is somewhere. It's going to be somewhere here. Negative 27, and that's our a cubed. That's it. We're done. A is less than a cubed, and a cubed is less than a squared. 
and that's our answer. A is less than A cubed, and A cubed is less than A squared. Whichever one shows you the quantities in this particular order is your answer. And that turns out to be A, A cubed, and A squared, answer choice B. Okay. Let's move on then, number 123. Again, I need my break. Number 123. Let's do it on the bottom here. In number 123, we are told that M, we are told that M is 60% more than T. They further go on to tell us that T is 40. Is it 40 or 40 percent? T is 40 percent less. T is 40 percent less than G. That's it, we are done. The question simply is M is what percentage of J? M is what percent of J? Let's see what we can do. The quickest, the simplest, the most economical uh, method here is to simply plug in numbers here. Forget the algebra, just plug in numbers. But when you plug in numbers, a couple of things you have to keep in mind. In a story like this, you have to understand where the story builds from. You have to build your story from the bottom up. You cannot build an edifice from the top floor and then try to worry about the foundation at the, at the end. You have to have your foundation and then, then, you, then you have your edifice. Do you understand? Then you have your grand building that you, that, that you want to erect. Where does our story start from? Our story does not start from here. Mary is 60% more than T, so Mary's income depends on T. And then give it to under, then they go on to say that T is 40% less than Juan. So T depends on J. The story begins from Juan. I'm going to give it a number. What number should I give him? It's a, it's a percentage problem. What number would be a nice number to plug in here? Let's make it 100. Let's make it 100. So what have what happened? If J is 100, T we are told is 40% less than Juan. So T must be 60. T must be 60. Once we have T, it goes, it's gone, goes on here. M we are told is 60% more than 60% more than 60. So now we have to figure out 60% of 60. Well 60% of 60 should not be that difficult, it's just 6 times 6. Or 10% of 60. We know 10% of 60 is 10%. 10% of 60 we know is 6. Well then 60% must be 6 times as much. So 60% of 60 is 36. 36 plus 60 because it's 60 percent more so m is going to be whatever this quantity is plus 36 more which means m is 96 that's it we are done the question was m m is what percentage of j the question was m was m was what percentage of j well it's right here our answer is right here j is 100 and m is 96 so what the question boils down to essentially now, after plugging in number, what the question boils down to is, can you tell me 96 is what percentage of 100? To which you will say, what the hell? 96 is what percentage of 100? That's what it is. That's, what, that's, that's, that's it. We're done. Let's go to number 124. Number 124. Number 124 is a little tricky. So we have to pay attention. In 124, what we are given are distances. What we are given are distances between pairs of between pairs of pairs of 30 cities. The question is how many entries would we need in our chart if we were to if we were going to show the chart? The typical chart that we see whenever they're trying to show distances between a pair of pair of cities. Again, the, the simplest, easiest, quickest way to understand this problem is to make up a simpler version of your own first. Take a customized exam. Make up a simple, simple problem yourself first. Do that problem and then whatever logic applies there, or then apply that logic in this thing. Don't start out with 30. 30 is too many. I'm going to have 5 cities. Let's have 5 cities. 
Very simple, very easy to see. Here are my five series A, B, C, D, and E. A, B, C, D, and E. Here are five series. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. A, B, C, D, and E. So if we had the chart, listen very carefully, okay? If we had the chart where we are, where, where we are showing uh, pairwise distances, where we are showing pairwise distances between two cities, the question is how many entries would we require? Five times five, we have 25 cells here. We have 25 cells here. Do you really think, do you really think that we need to show entry, some numerical entry in all 25 of the cells? The answer is no. The answer is no. For one thing, for one thing, right here the diagonal that you see here, this diagonal shows distance from city A to city A, which is zero. There is not going to be an entry entry. You're not going to, that chart is not going to put a zero there. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be trivial, it'll be silly, it'll be, it'll be ridiculous to put a zero there. There is no entry there. It's, it's, it's left blank. Distance from city A to city A is just, it's just silly. Similarly, distance from B to B is going to be blank. All the diagonal is going to be blank. So the very first thing we understand here is that there are five cities here, there were five cities. So first we understood is that it's not five squared. The total number of entries that we have is not five squared. It's five squared minus one, two, three, four, five. It is minus five, which is the diagonal. Let's keep listening. Now, once we put an entry here, let's say I put 12 here. Once, 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 once we are told that the distance from town A to town B is 12 kilometers, once we are told that the distance from town A to town B is 12 kilometers, do you really think we need to put another 12 here? Of course not. Because whatever the distance is from town A to town B is the same distance from A to B right here. So this cell is going to be mirror image of this cell. This, this cell is going to be mirror image of this cell. So instead of, put, instead of 12, I'm going to put here, I'm going to put here uh, variables. So if this is distance A, this is going to be distance A. If this is distance B, from town A to town C, if it's B kilometers, then town C to town B, if town A to town C, town A to town C is right here, so we'll be looking for C to A, C to A is going to be right here. This is the mirror image of this one. Right here, let's put it here. This ABCD is going to confuse us with this small ABCD. I should have used the different letters here. P, and this is P. If this is Q, this is going to be Q. If the distance from if the distance from C to B is R kilometers, then the distance from B to C is also going to be R kilometers. You get the you get the idea. These are all mirror image. These are all mirror images. So we don't need to show the we don't we don't need to show the entry in all of them. We only need to show the entry in these cells. I'm going to show you here where we need we need to show this entry, this entry, this entry, this entry, this one right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. That's it. The bottom half is the exact mirror image of the top half, or vice versa. It doesn't matter which one you look at. It's symmetric, and it's a mirror image of it. So how many entries do we have? We do not have 5 squared. We do not have 5 squared minus 5, but we have half as many. Because the bottom half is the same as the top half. That's all it is. That's it. Now we can figure out our pattern, our formula. The formula is that if we have n cities, if we have n cities, then it is going to be n squared minus n over 2. n squared minus n over 2. In the exam, we are, we are given 30 cities. 30 cities. And therefore, the total number of entries that we need are, is going to be 30 squared. Where can we put it here? Let's put it here n squared minus n over 2, which is going to be 30 squared minus 30 over 2. 30 squared is 900 minus 30 over 2, that's 870 over 2. 8 has 4 twos, 7 has 3 twos, and the remaining one goes and joins the 0 becomes 10, and 10 has 5 twos. We're going to have 435 entries. We're going to have 400 and 35 entries. That's all. That's all it is. I need my break again. Now what I want you to do at this point is
what I want you to do at this point is to compare this problem number 124 that we just finished doing I would like you to compare this problem compare this problem with number 133 on page 171 listen listen carefully okay I would like you to turn to page number 171. I want you like you to take a look at number 133, problem number 133. And I want you to pause this video and do this problem first yourself. Number 133. Pause it, pause the video, do this problem yourself using the same exact logic, and then come back and finish watching the video and see if the work that you do is the same work as the work that we are about to do together. The only so I'm gonna give you a little chance to pause and unpause the video. The only difference is that in this problem we're not dealing with pairs of cities. We're not dealing with pairs of cities, we are dealing with pair of teams. So we're going to have two teams that are going to play in a match. Each team we are we each team we are told plays against exactly one team only once. A given team A plays a given team B only once. They do not play more than once. We have eight teams. We have eight teams. The question is how many matches are we going to have? among these eight teams each each of the team plays each of the other team only once well it's very simple instead of instead of instead of five and instead of five and five instead of five by five it's going to be eight by eight one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight you see a b c d e f and g a b c d e f and G. you get the idea. This this entire column, this entire diagonal is going to be empty. Why is it going to be empty? Because team A will have a very tough time to play against team A. The only way that's going to happen if they, is that team A has multiple personalities. You understand? Team A is not going to play against team A. Team B is not going to play against team B. Team C is not going to play against team C. Team D is not going to play against this thing. This entire diagonal is going to be empty. Similarly, once Whatever the score is here, when team B plays against team A, that same score is going to appear here. Because a match against a match of team E, team, team A against team B is the same match that is played against. You know what I mean? I'm explaining way too much. That's it. The answer is eight squared minus eight. Let's do it. So, let's, let's do it slowly. First of all, we have to take the eight squared and minus the eight, which is the diagonal, and then you take half as many. That's it. So it's 64 minus 8 over 2, 64 minus 10, I know it's 54, so 64 minus 8 should be 56. 56 over 2, 56 over 2, 50 over 2 I know is 25, half of 50 is 25, that I do know, and half of 6 is 3. So it's going to be 25 plus, it's going to be 25 plus 3, 25 plus 3. There are going to be 28 matches between these eight teams if each team is to play against the other team only once. Let's do the very last problem in the page. That I just erased in a hurry, I should not have done that. The one that I just erased in a hurry is the problem number 133 on page 171. Let's do the very last problem. In 125, it's a very simple problem. We are told that the length to, length to width is 3.3 over 2. 3.3 over 2. The question is what is going to be the length? What is going to be the length? If the width is 8, this is way too simple, this is too babyish. Since this is 8 and this is 2, we need to multiply top and bottom by 4. That's it, that's your answer. 3.3x equals 3.3 over times 4. 3.3 over times 4. I know 3 times 4 is 12, and 0.3 times 4 is going to be 0.12, so it's going to be 12.12. Oh, I screwed up, didn't I? It's not going to be 3.3 times 4. See, I'm too cocky. 0.3 times 4 is 1.2. It's 1.2. It's because it's the tenth. It's the tenth of this amount. 
is a tenth of 12, tenth of 12 is 1.2. It is 13.2 is the answer. 13.2 and the answer is 13. The answer is 13. I will see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.